continue our program. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Merci, Monsieur le Président, pour ce. Cette... Thank you very much, ladies and well, Mr. Presidents, for these uh, inspiring debates. And without further ado, I would like to um, I would like you to welcome the Minister of Foreign Affairs and of International Development in the French Republic, Mr. Laurent Fabius. <laughs> Mr. Minister, what did you think of this debate? J'ai pensé que Well, I obviously concluded that experience was worth well something. That is to say. Well, this morning still I was telling President Bongo a lot of people think that presidents, ministers, or prime ministers arrive in the morning to their desk and think to themselves, what on earth are we going to be able to come up with today in order to bother our populations and our people, basically? And this is not exactly the way it happens. Of course, some choices are made differently, but I think the common point or the red thread uh, between all political responsible officers basically is to try and find solutions to the problems encountered by their respective countries. And I think politics is all about trying to render the people co-active and co-contributors to the fate of their own nations, in fact. And I believe the previous speakers and presidents found just the right level, basically, of the stakes and the challenges that their populations and countries were to meet. So basically, if I may allow myself a personal question, when you arrive to your office in the morning, uh, a few days ago when I arrived in Libreville, I saw you on television and you were in Washington with John Kerry talking, I believe, about the terrible problems facing the Syrian population. And occurring in Syria. The next morning I saw you on TV again in London talking about Ukraine, and then I learned that you were going to China. So I don't know if you managed to clone yourself, or are we sitting in front of the real or the fake? Um, Laurent Fabius, no, it's not the real one, yes, I have to confess. I'm only my copycat. The real one is in Latin America, to spill the beans. No, seriously speaking, um, well, what do I mean? Yes, I'm trying to be on all fronts. Definitely, it's part of our French policy, and it's also um, perhaps a certain conception of diplomacy. Sometimes we have the feeling that just by giving a phone call or appearing on TV, you can solve all problems around the world. But what I'm struck by, basically, is that, of course, a lot of things can be helped with modern technologies, but nothing will ever uh, substitute itself to direct human contact. And thank God, because we still have this very human specificity of um, learning by hearing and listening or talking, and therefore contact is highly important. Of course, I do on average 40,000 kilometers a month, which is the equivalent of uh, the, the, the planets or the Earth's circumference. But I think one of the advantages of such a lifestyle is that you end up sleeping very well on the aircraft. And that's so important because when you arrive in a new country and you'll have the privilege of addressing in a new public such as uh, this one, you need to be well rested, obviously. So you're the one who really set up this notion of economic diplomacy. How would you apply it to Africa? And how has it become really your action vector? Well, I have been Prime Minister, Minister of the Economy and Finances, and also Economy Teacher. So I am very much in my own element, and I very much like economics, obviously. But when I was confronted to the perspective of becoming Minister of Foreign Affairs, I had to ask myself some more uh, tactical questions about what I wanted to put the emphasis on, and what would appear as my top priorities. And I said to myself, well, diplomacy has very much evolved, in fact, Earlier on, 
foreign ministers or ambassadors would talk about pure and sheer diplomacy, about how we could best engage in such or such treaty, avoid um, war or uh, perpetuating peace and so on, which is, of course, a, an aspect of paramount importance. But nowadays, given the prevalence of economy, it's become totally impossible to segregate traditional diplomatic aspects from economic ones. And I would even go as far as saying that it is important, it's impossible, in fact, to separate um, political diplomacy from the educational, sportive, cultural, uh, as well as political diplomacy. So in a country such as France, which has a third most important diplomatic network in France, the first cultural network in the world, um, when I wanted to know what to put the accent or the emphasis on, well, I asked my ambassadors to start feeling as more than just sheer, pure diplomats, but also to identify with real real representatives and ambassadors of the small and medium-sized enterprises and of all the economic um, stakeholders of their own country. So that's how I go about it, basically. I ask every single one of my ambassadors to set up a plan for the coming years that I have to um, that I have to validate basically with specific economic ambitions and that enables us later on to have a benchmark when we then when we later on want to assess what progress have been made basically. So as to give us some key measurable fig figures and means to uh, assess the progress we're making in this field. So it also implies the change, the training method of our diplomats. And also, it implies that our ambassadors should stop uh, acting as if there were a cleavage between the private and public administration, that they should really integrate the fact that we're all wa walking towards the same goal and working in close collaboration towards the same goal. And I think that is probably the right way to go about it. It's a new um, structural relational model, basically, that enables us to better understand that wealth is created by companies, of course, but the public administration is at the service of companies and of the general interest. Prime Minister, um, I mean, Mr. Rinzer, sorry. Before going back to this notion of small of, of, of enterprises or companies, I would like to come back on this notion of diplomacy. What makes Africa want to go back to Paris to sort most of some of its problems in Nigeria, for example? Well, it's true that I was in China when the French president had um, gathered the president of Nigeria and a number of his colleagues um, suffering from or threatening to be struck by this horrible sect. The proposal emanated, as you know, from the good luck Jonathan president to go uh, to France to solve this problem. What, why was that? Well, if, because I, I believe, and correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken or if I'm sounding too arrogant, I think France has traditionally been a friend of Africa without a hidden agenda. And France has understood that African security was its own security, basically. Why did we interfere in Mali about a year and a half ago? Well, because, first of all, the transitional president in Mali then called up the French president saying that there were terrorists walking on Bamako, telling basically his French counterparts that he would be dead by the morning after if they didn't have been. Why did we um, arrive also with the help of um, the United States and Central African Republic, because if we hadn't intervened, it would have, it would have been a genocide. And you know, uh, and you can see blatantly what the dramatic consequences would have been not only for this country, but for the whole region. So I believe France has acquired uh, through its African friends and in front of its African friends, a reputation of efficiency, but also of general interest or disinterest, and I think that's what led the president of a number of Anglophone countries, in fact, to uh, come up with the idea of a gathering in France. And I discussed this several times with President Longo, in fact. The, friend, the front, 
French people or France's role is not to play uh, the policeman of Africa, basically. And I'm dreaming of a moment where Africans obviously will be able to organize their own security and to prevent such crisis on their own, of course, and then France will uh, stand aside to support uh, financially or um, diplomatically and tact for the, um, uh, the Africans' initiatives. Of course, our objective is to make sure that the Africans will determine their own economic, social, and security um, choices and initiatives. Thank you, Minister. Now, let me come back briefly to economy and allude to the Vedrine report, which uh, I think um, was uh, drafted partly by the Colonel Tianzhou, who is accompanying you, among others, where is it, it is expressed stipulated that France lost about over 10 years about 5% of its market share, which fell from 10, 15, uh, from 10 to 5%, if I'm not mistaken. How can you explain this? Well, because competition exists, of course. Uh, competition is not an illusion, and China is uh, certainly far from uh, uh, a fictitious uh, entity. And um, Chinese funds are... Uh, an obvious reality as well. So even though France has managed to maintain some strong positions in Africa and certain strongholds, because they have to work together in relative, in percentage or in relative value and presence, the French investments have uh, fallen back, basically. Now, why is that? Perhaps because of a number of cultural differences or certain critical points, turning points that we didn't uh, uh, approach in the right way. So now what I believe We should perhaps try to better understand what our African friends need by emphasizing two points, essentially. One is the issue of education. Products and services can be provided by pretty much anyone nowadays. But what, what sure you can legitimately expect from a country such as France is to bring an added value in terms of education in order to enable the African con countries to uh, increase their own education standards. And as this morning we had a part of the forum that was dedicated to the youth, as you know, I think that's clearly what emerged from their claims or their demands. It seems that's what they're expecting from us, either on behalf of their African leaders or uh, from countries such as France. And that is what will, at the end of the day, drive them or motivate them to go back to their own countries. And then secondly, I was slightly disappointed and perhaps surprised that among the priorities quoted by our uh, president friends, they didn't insist so much on the issue of environmental and nature of factors in the equation of the solutions that should be brought to the very serious issue of climate change. When you think of the development models or modes that should be adopted with respect to the previous centuries, and we discussed shortcuts on those uh, fields, what we in the meantime have understood clearly is that nature, nature's resources went endless and could not be exploited in just any sort of haphazard way. So that is something that probably has been already gathered by um, the uh, leaders of this continent, obviously, but it should be clearly spelled out by the relationship or marking the relationships between France and uh, African countries. And I think in that respect, France can act as a leader that will transfer a part of its know-how and values in the field of economic development. Well, I suggest that you come over to New York in September for the New York Economic Forum because the main subject will be climate change and its impact on economies. So uh, your contribution will be most appropriate there. Now, your portfolio has widened itself a few months ago to um, tourism, digital uh, economies. So how, how can, can France practically contribute to develop and diversify those sectors in the case of Africa? Uh, il y a, uh well, it's true that um, in the portfolio that I've uh, taken on recently, it's an, it's an innovation that is, but I think that a lot of countries are going to go down the same route. Before it was diplomacy, diplomacy, um, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, war, peace, uh, major international relationships, but uh, not everyone can be a Metternich.
And uh, in, in spite of uh, what I said earlier on about economy, um, I think uh, that more and more governments are going to introduce uh, 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 an interstice between uh, the foreign affairs and uh, external commerce and tourism. And uh, you move from foreign affairs to uh, what the country does outside its own, uh, its own borders. So uh, external action, when you want to judge a country, you judge it not only about one aspect of what it's doing outside its own borders, but uh, on everything that it does. So uh, with regard to Africa, um, we, we, we have, a, we, we, have a, we, we speak with Africa a lot, and um, I think that we have to be at this, the disposal of Africans with regard to uh, information, with regard to technology, and that we give the best that we have, that we uh, be able in a position to, to greet Africans and um, that we understand. And for me, this is uh, it's crucial. I liked what I heard earlier, earlier on. What, what was the formula exactly? You used it, Richard. It's not to uh, it's not to, to hold your hand out. It's but to shake hands. It's to, to work as equals. It's uh, it's Europe, which has for a long time was uh, leading the game. But now it's Africa that's going to give the example. But there must. It's not a, qu a question of being of having a winner and a loser. We have to work together with our, uh, our own relationships. And I believe that France can be one of the countries that understands that the best. Can we imagine that uh, very quickly uh, that uh, joint ventures might be set up, uh, Franco uh, Franco African? Well, they exist already, and they're going to be more and more. Not only to work together, but to go together to uh, conquer other markets. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's uh, exactly what I was. Uh, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I um, have in mind right now uh, a whole, a whole uh, range of sectors of extremely diverse sectors where the the technology of uh, one part, the the uh, experience of others, can uh, enable us to go and uh, and to go and conquer uh, markets in other continents. We're used to working together. It's. Uh, and uh, from that point of view, uh, French-speaking uh, uh, countries maybe uh, needs to, to change its uh, way of thinking a bit. With the development of Africa, we're going to have uh, you know, just a few years. Not, uh, we're going to have no, no longer 300 million French speakers, but five, six, 700 million uh, French speakers. So uh, the, the language in the world is going to be English or American, uh, Spanish and, uh, and French and Chinese, of course, but that will be in China, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Uh, of course, we're all uh, we're all fluent uh, in, in in Mandarin here. Of course, obviously, but uh, just a few subtleties that we need to to work on, uh, maybe. But uh, um, I believe that uh, uh, French-speaking uh, uh, language is a fact that we, as uh, French people, we need to to work in in Arab-speaking countries and English-speaking countries. The, I think that more and more, though, the French-speaking world is not uh, something that's enclosed. That's uh, that uh, is inward looking, but it's open to, towards the world. And all that gives us a lot of assets to go together to, to conquer markets abroad. And uh, I believe that this uh, notion of joint venture that you mentioned between Africans and French, that is, is what uh, it is uh, really a way forward. So a final question there uh, before I ask you if you have a message for the African youth who are with us uh, in this economic forum. In one of the proposals of the Bedrin report, it, uh, it also said a uh, uh, suggestion was that France open to African capitals, that uh, it facilitates the arrival of uh, African capital in the uh, French economy. Is that a reality, and how can that be implemented rapidly? Uh, I believe, and uh, that's why this forum is, is so interesting. I, I think there's a, a preconceived idea on Africa, which is uh, to totally obsolete Africa now. It, um, it's really the future. It's a way forward. It's where a lot of creation happens. Uh, there's a lot of technology, a lot of sport, uh, a lot of uh, culture, and the uh, the interest. Uh, one of the interesting points of this forum is to show all that, to show the, the man magnificent diversity of all that. And um, um, whether it's uh, under the shape in, of, uh, of companies or physical persons, there are already huge uh, capacities of investment. Uh, well, already the, the group, uh, the group Stevita, already where the president will be with us in a few moments. Yes, I, I bear in mind also uh, 
a lot of big African groups that we're, we're, that we're courting, I, we can say that, we're actually courting them for them to come and invest in Europe and in France. And is that, I think, the right, re the just return of things, really. So I believe that uh, that is an extremely fruitful uh, way for the future. And things have to go in, in, in both sides. There's no, no question of uh, dominant and the dominee. Uh, we're in an environment where the exchange has to happen both ways and has to go both ways. Now, with regard to youth, what could I say to youth? To give a message to youth? Uh, when, when you hear that, it puts 30 years on you immediately. <laughs> no, no, you're forever, you're forever young, Mr. Fabius. No, I, I would just say uh, they, they don't need this advice from me, but, uh, but I'll say it anyway. Be, just follow your dreams and, uh, and stay faithful to your dreams. That will, that will keep you young forever. Stay faithful to your dreams. Thank you, Mr. Minister. We'll uh, applaud you. And uh, thank you for having spent some time with us. Thank you infinitely. I'll let you go back to your chair. And to illustrate to the, the concrete that you uh, were evoking, we're now going to uh, spend the next five minutes to the, the uh, official signature in front of the President of the Republic of Gabon of four agreements, four agreements which have come together since last year, since uh, the forum of last year. They've happened over the past year, and these are results, actual concrete results, and we can see through this how France and Africa, France and Gabon, and uh, Korea, I believe also, Morocco, and also uh, the uh, African Bank of Development, uh, how they've uh, really brought together these projects and made them happen, projects for uh, benefit all. I'll call a John Quelch on to stage now to, uh, to uh, uh, look 